Good morning. Today we're all set up to put the names onto the Christmas stockings. So uh, if you have a look at my mistakes with Isabella, um, I actually drew it out freehand in pencil, which I normally would, and then got everything in the wrong place and uh, probably spelt it wrongly. And um, the spellings in our family are slightly random sometimes and ended uh, just too far over to the left. So I just added a snowflake. I'm actually going to put a bit more bling on this for Isabella because she's actually had this for, um, you know, two or three years. So I think that when she sees her little sister's stocking, which is this one, She's going to say, why haven't I got beads and things and bling? So, um, you know, I was uh, just thinking I need to add some thread. And talking about thread, I've been making some choices about what to do um, at the top. So the names at the top, really, um, I've been looking at variegated thread because I always struggle to use it. And then um, I went to the whole design and I thought if I can tie in something from the base and then take it up to the top that would be a good idea and today I've been really emotional I've um went to find my morning cup of old grey tea and uh couldn't we've run out and um I don't know whether it's just seeing the children's names on the um you know printing them out and thinking about them and missing them a lot um and this one Sienna is in Hong Kong and Ophelia is in Spain, and this is Ophelia's stocking. In You know, these stockings, it's funny, I've been thinking, well, shall I make it very pink, these letters, or shall I uh, keep it more sophisticated? What will her future boyfriend or husband think? And I think that's what got me very choked this morning. But, um, you know, what they're going to think is this child was loved enough to for somebody from a long way away or in lockdown or somewhere else to um, make something and think about them for the hours and hours and hours it takes. And, you know, I think I think that they won't realise what it was like for all of us missing them until they have their own grandchildren. And it would be nice if they could just think that, um, you know, we are missing them. And this is so much uh, more of a sort of personal statement, really, to make something for somebody that's handmade. Anyway, right, I'm going to tell you the settings um, that I should have used for Isabella's stocking, but I'm now going to use for Sienna's stocking. So I thought that I'd go for Calibri because it's more like teacher writing than anything else I can find. And um, so I printed it out. Now, on Word document setting, I chose an orientation of landscape, as you can see, it's sideways across the paper. And in Britain, we use A4 paper, but in America, I know it's, your sizes are slightly different. So you might have to do it over two pages, but landscape is good. Calibri is good. And I started with this is 250, which was just too big for the stocking. And this one is 200. And so it's very little difference, but I think this is a stitchable size. So I'm going to place this under my stocking um, on the light box. Um, of course, I've used a deep black for the for the colour of the letters on the word and no colour wash behind and on very white thin paper. Um, Ophelia told me that uh, both she and Juliet have um, seven letters in their name so I'm just going to test that um, because uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll centre it so I have, we have to be sort of halfway through it. So she's right but with a capital O that makes the centre about there. So it's really what's visually appealing to you. I'm now going to show you how to put the name onto the stocking. Now if you don't have a light box of any sort or a piece of glass or perspex you can put a light underneath and shine through with the words on the back um, then you could use a window like we uh, did at the beginning to draw out your design or you could actually just put this down on a hard table and put the printed uh, words on the top and just use a sort of form of a prick and pounce. So I'm using a pencil. This is actually just an ordinary bog standard hotel HB pencil. And I'm actually just making little dots on the name Sienna. Now I'd rather get it, poke it through. Now this is why you do need a sharp pencil and actually you need spare pencils because it would be really irritating to get halfway through this and then have to stop. So. 
So you just make little dots. Now let's see how that works. So that's a guideline and then you're just going to join the dots. A little dot to dot. So let's see if that's what, oh yes. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not bad. And then we just draw the S over the top. And after all, that's going to be covered in stitches. And any little mistakes you make, you can just add a little flower or a bead or a bubble or something. Now, if you do have a light box, obviously, you can put the piece of paper underneath and put the light box on. I hope the camera copes with that, Richard. Mm, it's fine. <laughs> You've got such a reassuring sort of a voice, this mystery man behind the camera. I'm going to ask Karen to come up later and do the next one. <laughs> right, OK, let's see if that fits quite well. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Is that does that look level to you? No, it's going up at the right hand side. It's fairly important to get the level right. There, good. OK, so then I just draw down the centre of each one. And as you can see, it's much easier to do it with a light box or with the window method. And with the window method, obviously, you'd sellotape it down. But my meaty fist is enough. Now, Richard, I've got you to ask you a very important question today, and I want an answer. What's that? Is there any Earl Grey yeah. tea in this house? Because Two boxes of it. Where? Where you put it. Everybody's about to witness a domestic. <laughs> there will be a meltdown. What do you mean where I put it, by the way? You put it, strangely, you put it on the kindling, on the fire. <laughs> I mean, on the fire, what oh, we're in, going to put the, on the fire. Yes, in, in the, the kitchen, in the back kitchen. Oh, yeah. goodness me. OK, right. I'm going to show everybody nuts. Yeah, now, can, you, uh, can you just tell people um, uh, what sort of price a, a light box costs? Yeah. You know, oh, well, that's, that's a pretty sensible question. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll start on the for you one then. Um, well, the a light box like this, and this is one that actually did break, um, this is by a light. It's called a light pad as well, and this one was quite expensive. It was about two hundred pounds, but it's massive. It's A one size at least. I think is that A one? Yes, A three double A one, and um, the um, the small one. Well, there's, we've I got, can just it's over can you there. You see it over there. Yeah. That's an A three size, but you can also get really small. You can get A four ones, or you can use your um, iPad. I'm not quite sure how to do it, but perhaps somebody could write in and tell us because we're getting lots of advice. I've had a lovely physiotherapist who's uh, given us a lot of advice about posture and how to uh, sit, how to warm up for embroidery, which I'm going to follow and to feature later. Um, but we finished the stockings. We're going to get these done um, this week. You should, you should say that it wasn't the actual glass bit that broke. It was the fitting. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes this is yeah, really, the, the really electric sexy. fitting. You, you, you actually... Uh, you see this bit here, that is just like a radio. It just plugs into the power, but it's actually the very end bit. And you see, this is just mocked against the wall. Um, and so Richard's put a bit of uh, very <laughs> glamorous, <laughs> what is that stuff? <laughs> Take of some sort. And that's actually held it in place. But it's the twiddling it is the, is the problem. And our electrician actually has had a look at that. So just be careful not to leave anything like this on. And this is a very dark room. This is where we, uh, the kit packing room. This is where Georgie usually sits. So I'm going to go do a filia now. And then I'm going to go outside because I'm going to have a guest today. I'm going to have um, possibly Liz coming from a, uh, from Kendall for a long distance coffee. She's bringing her own. And um, Karen's going to come up with hers as well. And maybe we'll do a bit of filming outside. 